Welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to replace the potentiometers of this SZBK07 DC-DC converter. So I have already used this uh, DC-DC converter in several projects. In fact, this particular model uh, comes from another project, so I recycled it. And because of that, it already has some buyers and it has its uh, potentiometers removed. And what I will do is a bit different from one of my video where I actually replaced the potentiometers uh, for these ones. Uh, this time I will use these blue potentiometers. They are the same value, 100 kilo ohms, but uh, they, uh, they have a bit different uh, principles. And uh, I noticed in the comment sections uh, of several videos where I use this uh, kind of uh, DC-DC converter that people had problems when they replaced the potentiometers and then at that time I suspected that they messed up the polarity of the pins and here I will show you how you can mess it up and what are the key differences between these two guys here and uh, at the end there will be some kind of proof of concept that you can actually replace the potentiometers without any kind of uh, problem so what we will do first we will learn a bit about the potentiometer, what we are uh, going to use. So this is a multi-turn 100 kilo ohm potentiometer and the original potentiometers inside this kind of uh, DC-DC converter looks something like this. So it's a small uh, blue box and they are also 100 kilo ohm uh, and their value is 100 kilo ohms. So then uh, when you usually look at this kind of uh, potentiometer, uh, you can assume that the ground and the VCC or the positive side is on the two sides of this potentiometer. So if you look at it like this, then this side, the left side here, should be the ground pin and uh, this side should be the VCC pin. So how can you check this? So you use a uh, multimeter, turn it on, on uh, resistance mode so you can measure the resistance and you put some uh, clips or whatever uh, probes you have on the two sides and what should happen here is that uh, you should see roughly the nominal voltage of this uh, potentiometer and if you turn the shaft or the knob nothing should change here so I will try to put everything together and we have a good contact so 80, 5, 84 something uh, kilo ohms so this is this is supposed to be a 100 kilo ohm potentiometer so the uh, the first thing that we see is that this is a bad potentiometer it doesn't uh, have uh, the same value and then if i turn the shaft nothing happens so now the fluctuations that you see is from the contact here uh, but uh, when i turn from the minimum position to the maximum position of course you should see this value going from zero to, to the maximum value, which is 85, but that does not happen. So that means that we managed to find the ground and the VCC pins. So that excludes the only single pin that we have left, and uh, that will be the Viper. So then what you have there is, now this is of course on the maximum, so if I turn it counterclockwise, you should see the uh, value dropping here. And what it uh, does, it actually drops. So then I actually can make this zero. So this is what happens. And then uh, you can proceed. Uh, I have some other boards uh, from earlier uh, experiments, unsuccessful ones. So here you can just follow the same polarity uh, that you have for these uh, tiny blue guys, these tiny blue potentiometers. And uh, you can just use some cables and connect your potentiometer. And in fact, uh, I used this kind of uh, strategy or method for various uh, projects, for example, uh, power supplies, adjustable power sources and so on, and it worked. But then uh, we have this blue guy here, the multi-turn potentiometer, and this might show some different behavior. So. Uh, I guess those people who had problems with their uh, circuits, uh, they messed up the wiring because this doesn't have the same wiring. So you should always measure uh, the things. So what I put here, uh, the color code already tells you what is happening here. 
but uh, let's uh, repeat the same experiment that we did here. So we take one of the sides and uh, put it on the potentiometer or put it on the multimeter and we use the other side and put it on the multimeter. So let's clip it and let's see what happens here. So this is not 100 kilo ohms and if I start to turn this in a certain direction then if I turn it clockwise for example I can see that the value actually drops which means that I managed to find uh, two different pins and one of these pins uh, are the vipers or the viper so what we can see here is that when I uh, turn this clockwise then the value decreases that means that this should be uh, the red which might be a wrong color code is the ground and then uh, the blue one should be the actual uh, viper and how we can prove this is that uh, if I take the black wire and uh, connect this to one of the probes and connect the suspected viper to the other probe then now we have 100 kilo ohm and now if I uh, turn this counterclockwise now this should drop and as you can see it drops and now what we have is that we know that the two side is the black and the red wires so then if I connect this uh, to the clip what should happen it should be the same as here so we get the nominal value here and when I turn the shaft nothing should happen so this is the nominal value and this is much more closer to 100 kilo ohm than it was in this case and if I turn the shaft nothing happens because we are basically measuring anything except the output of the potentiometer so uh, that's why nothing happens so then once again uh, here what happens is we have this potentiometer and then uh, the one uh, the pin which is uh, closer to the back of this uh, let's say device uh, that is the viper pin and then these two pins are the VCC and the ground uh, pins and then uh, once again we can try to determine this so I have the viper as you can see that is connected to the positive side of the multimeter and now I take the red wire which is the first pin so the closest one to the shaft and connect it and see how it behaves so now I turn it clockwise and it drops uh, the uh, resistance and then of course if I connect this to the black one if I turn it clockwise it should increase the resistance and that happens there because basically what you have inside this potentiometer is like two resistors and they share this uh, 100 kilo ohms in a certain proportion so if uh, let's say the shaft is in the middle then both resistors are 50 kilo ohms if you are like 90% towards one of the resistors, then one of the resistor will be 90 kilo ohm and the other will be 10 kilo ohm. Or if you are at the 10% uh, position, then it will be the other way around. And uh, based on the proportions or the ratio between the two resistors, you get the output voltage on the Viper. So this is what uh, happens here. So then uh, what we can see is that uh, this, this behaves like this. So if we go back uh, ju just uh, for a minute uh, to this. So this was the ground. So let's uh, connect it to the black uh, clip. And then uh, the Viper was uh, in the middle. So if you manage to find the ground, then if you turn the shaft clockwise, then the resistance uh, would increase. And at the end, it would reach uh, the nominal uh, value. So we can do the same here. So I just connect the Viper. And then let's say I connect the red one because why not? So now I go clockwise and then uh, the resistance drops. So this is not the ground, that's very good. So now I go to the black. And of course now I turned it uh, totally towards clockwise. So it's at the maximum value. So now we know that uh, this one is the positive side of the potentiometer 
this is the negative side of the potentiometer, and then this is the viper. So this is how it works. So it is not like you have the plus and minus sides on the on the two sides of the potentiometers, but in fact uh, the power supply, let's call it power supply, so the ground and your positive voltage is connected to the first two uh, if you come from the chef direction. And then uh, the output is, let's call it output, uh, that's on the back. So this is how it works. So what I will do, uh, I will just, I, I have already prepared these cables, so I will just uh, solder them in and then we test it and uh, see how it works. So everything is assembled. So here we have the DC DC converter. Here comes the input voltage, which is now set to 20 volts and three amperes. And then here comes the output voltage. So it comes out on these thick wires. Uh, we have some clips here, and then I connect it to a load, which is a six amper Peltier cooler, the EC12706 uh, model. It's uh, glued to a uh, heat sink so the hot side can dissipate some heat and then uh, this is the CC potentiometer and this is the CV potentiometer and this multimeter measures the output voltage so uh, we have nothing else to do than just turn on the power supply it's uh, this white box here in the corner so hopefully nothing will burn down and this will work as intended so let's see what happens if I turn this on and we can see that uh, it draws a lot of power uh, and it runs at a quite high voltage. So I will limit the current if I figure out the directions for these uh, potentiometers and we will see if we can reach some uh, drop. So now I managed to drop down the, the current, which is very good. So now I limited the current and that dropped down the voltage, of course, because of Ohm's law. So now I will further increase the current, let's say to 4 volts. Uh, since this is just passively cooled, uh, then it can get hot quite quick. So we keep it limited a bit. And why you see the voltage uh, changing is because this thing, uh, the patch cooler changes its temperature, so its internal resistance also changes. And then uh, its characteristics uh, is also changed. So it will allow more or less uh, power uh, running through it, depending how the temperature is changing. So now I try to change uh, something with the voltage potentiometer, but uh, I have to see what is the direction of this. And now, as you can see, I can drop the voltage as well. So now I, I go to the maximum, because now I hit the current limit. This is like 5.09, and now I start to turn this slowly, and now you see that uh, as I drop uh, the voltage, uh, then it uh, follows it. So if I turn this, uh, then I can drop the voltage. And now, of course, I can turn the current, and now I zeroed the current, so I cannot turn this anymore, and basically we went down to the uh, minimum output voltage of this uh, thing, which is around 1.25 volts according to the data sheet of this buck controller. So this will drop down there roughly, uh, slowly, if I leave it like this. But I increase the current again, so I can increase the voltage. So now uh, the current is basically sort of maxed out, let's say, and now we are limited by the voltage. So now I can turn this again. And you can see that now I allow more voltage and it nicely climbs up. And then of course now I can go back to the CC uh, potentiometer and start to chop down the, the, the current. And of course that will then bring down the, the voltage because yeah, we are just playing with the ohm's law here. So both potentiometers work as it intended. Uh, it might be that I messed up the polarity because if I turn uh, the voltage potentiometer counterclockwise then the voltage increases and if I turn it clockwise then I drop the voltage so then yeah it's nothing else I just have to flip the polarity of them but uh, for me now 
as a proof of concept it, it was just uh, good enough. I just wanted to show you that uh, you can use these potentiometers and uh, actually you can run a lot of current through this system. I can feel the heatsink is getting quite hot because yeah, several amps are running through the Peltier cooler right now. So you can use these potentiometers and they work and they work pretty much the same as this, but of course with more precision. But you have to notice that the Viper is at the back and not in the middle. So please be careful with uh, these things and always measure the uh, layout of the pins before you put it in your electronics because you never know if you short out something. So yeah, this was uh, basically the whole video. Uh, I just wanted to show you that uh, this works. I just waited for these potentiometers for several months, so that's why I haven't uh, came up with this earlier. But now they arrived, so I could show this to you. So I hope that this video was useful and hope that it will be helpful for those who want to replace uh, the potentiometers of these kind of uh, DC-DC converters and uh, they want to use this uh, this kind of 100 kilo ohm, uh, let's say precision potentiometer so i hope you learned something i hope you find the content useful and see you in the next video